let me show you which recipes I've been enjoying a lot of lately. The vegetable medley and a healthier gluten-free vegan and nut-free pie crust. They are both wonderful on their own. Of course, fill the pie crust with whatever you want, but together they make the most awesome hearty vegetable pot pie. And if you've never tried making homemade gravy before, you must make a batch to serve with a pot pie. It's incredibly comforting and so delicious. By the way, I'm Chantal from freshisreal.com where all recipes are plant-based and allergen friendly. To make the vegetable medley, which is a great side dish, and also the amazing filling in the vegetable pot pie recipe, it's as simple as preparing a whole bunch of garden fresh vegetables, including cabbage, kohlrabi, and celeriac, with a few more. You cook and mix them with a gorgeous creamy sunflower seed sauce to keep the recipe vegan, gluten-free, and also nut-free. If you like mushrooms, peas, fresh corn, or the more traditional pot pie ingredients, add some or make a swap with another ingredient. Note that this is not your average pot pie. It does not include dairy, eggs, or meat. It is a pie with vegetables, lots of them, and it's vegan. The dairy-free cream sauce with beautiful raw sunflower seeds is super easy to make, and it's actually pretty nutritious. Once the vegetable filling is ready, enjoy some right away or use it to fill a double crusted gluten-free vegan pie crust. You can bake the pot pie in a deep dish, this is the deepest one I have, or a springform pan, which is even better to pack in more filling. Using parchment paper to roll and transfer the dough is your best bet as it makes it so much easier. More on rolling the dough in a sec. Fresh Israel tested many variations for the pie crust ingredients. These were the final ones, six in total, and some boiling water. Try your best to follow the suggestions in the recipe. If not, you might get a dough that doesn't hold together. Oops. <laughs> and if at any point your dough breaks a little while transferring it to your baking dish, don't worry, it can easily be patched up. Okay, wait a sec. How do you make a healthier, gluten-free, vegan, and nut-free pie crust that doesn't have tons of butter or shortening? Is it even possible? To make the pie crust recipe, it is as easy as combining a few ingredients, starting with the hot water and flaxseed meal and giving it a quick whisk. Then add the remaining ingredients except for the olive oil and mix. You can feel the dough at this point. It should feel a bit sticky, but it shouldn't be too mushy. I need to mention that in the recipe post, you will find information about using a custom gluten-free flour blend compared to a store-bought all-purpose gluten-free flour mix. So don't forget to check it out. And note that I do prefer blends without xanthan gum. Now, Let's add the last ingredient, which is organic extra virgin olive oil and mix. The little bit of olive oil should be just enough to help you create the best dough texture. At this point, the mixture might look a little bit crumbly and that's okay. Next, gather the dough into a ball with your hands is fine and transfer it to a parchment line working surface. You do not need to dust extra flour on your dough. Shape it into a ball and reserve about one third of the dough for the top crust if making a double crusted pot. You can wrap up the smaller piece of dough until you're ready to roll it. Shape and flatten the larger piece of dough into a six to eight inch disc. Place a second sheet of parchment paper over top the larger portion of dough to help you roll it evenly and thinly. Some gluten-free flour blends are not as smooth. So this is a great tip if you're having difficulties rolling your dough. Try folding the outside edges back onto the dough and roll it again to help you create an even thickness throughout. You can also use plastic wrap if that is what you have, but I prefer unbleached parchment paper as it works very well. Once the first piece of dough is rolled out to a big flat circle about one to two inches larger than the top of your pie dish, proceed to carefully plan your pie dough transfer. These are the methods I've tried. The first one, if you feel brave, is to simply grab your rolled out dough with parchment paper and flip it into your pie dish, then peel off the paper. The second is to place your pie dish upside down onto the dough and then carefully pick up the pie dish with the dough and parchment paper and flip everything over. Depending on your pie dough texture, one method might work better than another. The last method I tried was to pick up the dish 
and the rolled out dough with paper and flipping the dough into the dish while holding it. A bit scary, but it worked. I will admit that I am a go with the flow kind of baker and I suppose that the more traditional way of transferring pie dough with a rolling pin could work for this gluten-free vegan dough, but I haven't tried. I'll leave it up to you to experiment. There is one more method to consider. If for whatever reason you decide to make only a half batch of dough for a smaller 8 inch pie with no top press, you could also try the no roll approach of simply pressing in the dough directly into your pie dish. This method would also work great as a plan B for dough that does not roll out easily. If that was to happen, it's most likely due to the gluten-free flour blend that you tried or if you switched the olive oil to some other fatty substance. Once the dough is in your pie dish or springform pan, you can fix any cracks and shape and press the crust evenly. Next, add the warm vegetable filling, then carefully transfer and place the top crust. Seal and crimp the edge. Note that the bottom crust does not need to be par-baked for the vegetable pot pie recipe. Don't forget to cut a few steam vents and then bake in a preheated 350 degree oven on the center rack for at least one hour or until the edge of the crust is golden and the filling starts bubbling through the vents. Make sure to let your pie cool for at least 30 minutes to help it set before serving. Oh, and let's not forget the quick, tasty vegan gravy. It's very simple and easy to make, so I'll include a link to the recipe in the video's description. Once you have a batch of this warm, comforting sauce, enjoy it with whatever you usually eat with gravy. It's so good. The idea of veggies in a pie crust does not scare me one bit. That's why I literally ate two whole pies to myself. Well, <laughs> at least one slice per day for a good while. And this pot pie makes the best leftovers. I honestly look forward to the next time I can have a slice of pie as it is so easy to warm up with gravy. Don't forget the gravy. And you know you're eating something good. Okay, now I'm hungry and craving vegetable pot pie. Tell me, are these recipes you would make? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.